I just recently posted a video about the Excalibur plugin, which at the time was my favorite plugin for Premiere Pro that I've ever found. But then I found out that the people who made Excalibur also have another plugin called Watchtower, and Watchtower may be becoming my new favorite plugin. So let's check this out because it's quite a game changer. And I know I say game changer a lot, but this is really gonna speed up a lot of people's workflow. So let's go check it out. So now just like Excalibur, if we go back to gumroad.com slash nights of editing, we can see that we have Excalibur here, which we all know and love now because of my last video. And now we have Watchtower, which is only one third of the price, only at $25. So to get it, it's the same way you add it to the cart. Uh, you check out, put all your information in here. They're gonna email you a link and it's gonna show a site like this where you can download Watchtower and put your license key in. I'm gonna hide my license key again for obvious reasons, but this is where it will be for you. Next up, you're gonna go download it, open up the zip file, and then run the application based on whichever system that you have, Windows or Mac. Once you have it all installed, then you just close that installation. It'll probably prompt you to delete the installation file. So go ahead and do that. And now you're all set. Next up, you're gonna open up Premiere Pro, go to Window Extensions, and then there you'll find Watchtower right beside Excalibur Settings. So then inside of the Watchtower window, you're gonna be prompted to put in your license key. This is where you're going to paste the key that was in that window before that we were sent. And that's it, that's how to install Watchtower. So now let's get into actually what it does. So here I have a project called Watchtower Project. It is completely empty right now, and that is for good reason. If I go to my finder, I have a folder on my desktop called Watchtower. The folder doesn't really matter, but inside I have a folder for footage, music, photos, and then the project itself. So normally what would happen is if I was to import each of these folders into Premiere Pro, I would get an empty folder. And that's for good reason, I don't have anything inside of that folder. But then if I was to drag one of these videos into my footage folder, nothing would happen because the folder doesn't natively sync with Premiere Pro. I'd have to open it up back in my finder and then import the file back into Premiere Pro, put it into the right folder, and then now I have the bees video inside of my footage folder. But, but now thanks to Watchtower, we can now auto sync all of those folders between Premiere Pro and After Effects and then our folders in our file explorer or finder. So that's gonna speed up a whole lot because you won't have to worry about having offline footage and footage not syncing and being auto imported. If I go ahead and delete this folder, I can go up to Window, Extensions, Watchtower. I click on this folder window. And now I just scroll down to find where that Watchtower folder was. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna skip this folder here because I don't need to import the project that I'm currently working on into that project. So I'm just gonna deselect that. But then if I select this folder, everything else will be selected inside of it. And now I can just click OK. So now we see a Watchtower folder with all of these folders that match up. We have footage, music, and pics, footage, music, and pics. And then we have that one file still in footage. So the beauty of Watchtower is that now I can start moving more files into these folders and we can watch, it will automatically add it to those folders in Premiere Pro. And if this isn't happening, you might have to go into your settings and make sure that enable auto sync is turned on. Otherwise you'd have to click this button here, which is a force sync button. Some other settings that you'll find in here are check the whole project for duplicates during the import. So sometimes some files can get fairly crazy names, especially if you're downloading them from uh, a website, just a string of random characters. So sometimes you might forget you have that file already imported into Premiere. Normally Premiere would just accept the duplicate and let you import it, but Watchtower will now notice that you have that same file already imported and then just skip that during the import. Next we have show import options, and this is whenever we have 
uh, certain dialogues that pop up with certain imports. We can leave that to turn on if you want. Show notifications are that little blue box that keep popping up every time something changes. Uh, just saying, hey, this was auto synced and we have a new file in this folder. Next up, we have the vertical buttons layout. This really is not a huge deal. It basically just changes the orientation of these three buttons here. You can see that if I uncheck this, it just goes horizontal. This is basically only if you're planning on um, docking this window in a certain area. Maybe if I was to put them here, I would want vertical buttons. But thankfully Watchtower works in the background so you don't have to really worry about keeping this open all the time. And then share anonymous usage data is basically just letting the developers uh, be able to see what features are being used and not used within Watchtower so that they can uh, further update this plugin based on what people actually want out of this. If you're worried about uh, your privacy and not sure what they're going to be collecting, you can go to the manuscript and under the settings folder of the Watchtower manuscript, there is a link that shows what everything is being collected. So feel free to check that out. On the topic of the manuscript, if you have any further questions that I don't touch on in this video, you can go and check out the manuscript for Watchtower as well. I'll link it down in the description if you want. They go into detail on some other things that I don't really know much about. So if you're a nerd and I want to talk about um, expressions and all that fancy stuff, or you're just curious to see what sort of things that I forgot in this video, then you can go and check that out as well. Next up in settings, we have a tab for files. This is a huge list of all the different file fo formats that are acceptable with Watchtower. So you can toggle them on and off if you don't want them to be synced or sunk. I'm not sure when exactly this would come in handy, but maybe along the way you're finding that there's always certain files that are being imported by accident and they're not benefiting or not being used in your project. You can go ahead and find the file extension and then turn those off in this just to make sure that your projects are a little bit cleaner. And then if you have one sort of file that you're not seeing in this giant uh, list of files, you can go ahead and add an extension. So it's a pretty huge list of files and extensions, so you don't really have to worry too much about compatibility in that sense. Next up, we have a tab for folders. This one may fly under certain people's radar, but in the folders tab, this is folders that you want to exclude from the import. Meanwhile, the files tab is things that you want to include. So for example, if you have a proxies folder in your project folder, you may not want to automatically have those sunk because I think they automatically already get sunk with Premiere Pro. So you don't want to be automatically syncing those a second time or maybe you have a backup folder or untitled folders, you can go ahead and add them. So you can go and add proxies in like this. And it's also not case sensitive. So we can go like this. And you can see that it doesn't change here. This is one area where the manuscript will come in handy because there are opportunities to use expressions which I was mentioning before. This is one area that I didn't really fully understand and wrap my head around in the manuscript. So I would recommend going to check that out if you wanna try out using expressions in your folders to be excluded. And then finally we have license. You can use this license for two seats and you can deactivate it from within this window if you wanna transfer it to another computer. So that is the settings window. Here we have a little help button which opens up the manuscripts. So even if you don't want to click on the link in the description, you can still click on the help button and it will bring you up to here. So now that we have Watchtower enabled, you can close this window and it will start working in the background. We can keep working and adding our footage to our folder. You can see that it's already being added in here. That's it for the most part. That's pretty much all that Watchtower does. There is a little bit more so Watchtower has a lot more compatibility than Excalibur does. It works with all the way down to 2017, all the way up to 2020 currently. And I'm pretty sure 2021 will be coming sometime soon. One small issue that they have right now with older generations is importing and auto-syncing uh, 
image sequences. So here, if I take my folder of a hyperlapse I did of the Arc de Triumph, uh, it'll see that it brought it into the pics folder. And here we can see that we have an image sequence instead of a whole list of images. One small issue that I found personally with image sequences is that uh, you have to have the 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. You have to have all the zeros in there for it to work. If you're trying with just the, like a name underscore one, two, three. So if you're ever exporting like a time lapse from Lightroom, you should make sure to change your export settings to having all those zeros to make sure that this works. But speaking of exporting, one fancy thing about Watchtower is that if you already have a image sequence of a time lapse, for example, but you want to re-edit them in Lightroom, but you don't want to lose all the work that you've done in Premiere, you can export them in Lightroom to the exact same name, overwrite them in, in the file explorer, and then Watchtower will automatically auto-sync and fix all of that for you, um, as long as you have the auto-sync feature enabled. So it's a lot quicker to do that, and it's one feature that uh, Premiere doesn't have. And then one little bug that comes with that is in um, Premiere 2017 and 2018, the frame rate will automatically be reset to whatever the default is. So if I was to go and change this frame rate here, update it, and then have it resync in an older version of Premiere, the frame rate will go back to 29.97 in my case here. So one thing to look out for if you have 2017 or 2018. So I know a lot of people who work with Premiere and After Effects use project templates and folder templates where they would just copy and paste this to a new location change the name of the project and then have all of your your footage and your photos and your music all those folders already set up so that you don't have to keep doing them in the manuscript watchtower has a way that you can uh, enable watchtower to be automatically working within these templates using the post haste software for templates this isn't something i've tried out yet but now that i've read the manuscript i might try it out sometime soon but if you use post haste or if you're looking for a new way to organize all of your file structures and start using templates with your projects, then I would suggest looking through the manuscript where you can see all about how to get it all set up with post haste using Watchtower and have everything syncing right from the get go without having to import anything from the start of your project. And then one final little tip I'll give is being able to sync certain folders in your file explorer to an existing bin that you may have set up in your project. So if I was to go ahead and create this new bin called bin, I can click on it and have it selected and then Alt or Option click on this button in Watchtower. This is gonna open up a file explorer finder window. And now I can go ahead and sync with any folder in my computer that I want to sync with. And you can see here it says link. So I just link it. And now here I can move and now it gets sunk to this bin folder, which was linked to this video folder. So there's still a little bit more for me to be looking into, uh, especially all of the deep settings like regex and expressions in the ignore folder window. Thankfully, the developer has a pretty thorough manuscript that you can go through uh, if you feel like I didn't explain anything. And maybe if you feel that way, feel free to leave a comment on this video as well, and maybe I can give a little bit more of an explanation in the comments if needed. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something. If you liked it, drop a like, and if you loved it, drop a subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.